On the 28th of April, it's Workers' Memorial Day, an important day any year, but this year it's got a particular tone to it. At 11am, we're asking people to join in a moment's silence to remember the key workers we have lost during this crisis. Whilst it's important for us to remember those who've died, it's also very important for us to fight for those that are living. I became a nurse because I wanted to save life, not to forfeit mine. In the last few weeks, over a hundred of my colleagues have died because of the coronavirus. Those people who've died shouldn't have died. They've died because our government didn't make the preparations, didn't get the PPE in stock, hasn't done the testing, hasn't done the tracking, so we didn't know who did and who didn't have the illness, and even when we did, we didn't have the equipment to keep us safe. Health workers and care workers and bus drivers, delivery and supermarket workers, are all putting their lives on the line at the moment to keep essential services going, but we shouldn't have to do that. These people didn't walk out with guns or protection of shields and pepper sprays. These people died doing their jobs, risking their lives to serve us every single day. All the families and friends of loved ones that I cannot imagine how they could possibly feel in at this time. And for so many, those lives did not have to, to die so prematurely. There was no need for it. Donald Soweto was a cancer nurse, a Filipino nurse, a great nurse, who died having contracted the coronavirus. He'd said that he was concerned that uh, there was no protection at work. And a month after having said that, he died. He developed symptoms, he went into isolation, he tried ringing 111, couldn't get through. The night before he died, he rang his elderly mum. He said to his mum, I don't think I can fight this virus. It's like a knife stabbing all over my body. He had asthma, so he knew he was vulnerable. But he didn't need to die. As part of my job, we now carry out snack rounds on COVID wards to ensure patients are not becoming malnourished. We also help with feeding and mouth care where needed. We're finding actually that when we need to feed patients, it's becoming harder and harder. There's not enough fit masks, but there's a struggle that if we've started seeing a patient, we can't leave them just to feed for themselves. If they're too frail and unwell, we have to help them. I had to rearrange my visit so that I could see the immunosuppressed cancer patient uh, before I saw the COVID patient um, and then come straight home and put all my clothes in a hot wash to avoid um, contaminating my colleagues by going back to work and also to avoid contaminating my family when I got home. But it's not always possible to, to do this, to kind of arrange your visits like that. Even in the areas where we are lucky enough to have supplies, health workers still feel very vulnerable. We don't feel the guidelines and what PPE we're told we can use gives us adequate protection. There is a nervousness and great confusion around appropriate and inappropriate protection. When to and when not to wear it, how much, how long, what size. And the icing on the cake with Matt Hancock suggesting key workers are overusing PPE, which showed a complete lack of propriety in his understanding of our work, our positions and our safety. We actually put patients in danger as we become vectors for the virus ourselves. We need the right equipment the right resources and the right PP now. I'm currently not working. I've made the decision to stop taking shifts. I'm a zero hour contract social care worker. Um, I was being asked to do tasks that were non-essential, that increased contact with clients for non-essential reasons. PP wasn't provided. I'm getting anger by the day. I'm angry at the government, I'm angry sometimes that the, the people who are supposed to lead us can't seem to make a decision, they change every day. This is a message to Matt Hancock, we need PPE and we need it fast and we need it now today. There is not enough, there is not enough of the right adequate stuff. We are having patients cough in our faces and sneeze over us and we're wearing just basic paper surgical masks. It's not good enough. Whatever your guidance that you've created, it's not good enough. We want action and we want it fast. We want no more deaths. We want no more deaths. Do you hear me? We go to work not as sacrifices. We are not lambs to the slaughter. We're trying to provide care and we need your help to get that PPE onto us so that we can do it adequately. You either do that or you step down now. One death of a key worker is too much. Over a hundred deaths of health and social care workers is just unbearable. I don't sleep at night for worrying about this, but let's be honest, I'm not responsible and on my own I can't do anything about it. 
We must ensure these precious lives were not lost in vain. We owe it to them and to ourselves and their families to prevent further precious loss of life. Stand with us on April the 28th to remember our loved and lost, the selfless and incredible humans each and every single one of them were. But let's also make a stand. I want you to come together with me, with your colleagues, with your neighbours, with your family and your friends on Tuesday the 28th of April. What we're asking to do next Tuesday is to take part in a minute's silence, but also to do something more, something that tells Matt Hancock and the government that health workers and other key workers and their families matter. On April 28th, we want all workers to stop work and hold protests, demanding the government give us the proper PPE we need to keep all NHS, social care and essential workers safe from COVID-19. So please, alongside this moment, silence, join in socially distance actions. We require all non-essential workplaces to shut down. We want adequate, fact-proven PPE now. And without kit, there will be no care. No one should go to work to die. Thank you.